Welcome back to another guide video. This one is going to focus on tips and advice for the Season of Opulence Iron Banner quest. Please note that Bungie did mention they are looking at changing this before the last Iron Banner of the season, set to happen sometime in August. This video is going to focus mainly on the grenade portion of the quest as that is the hardest. Each class will be addressed with recommended subclass and relevant exotics. Use a timestamp on the screen or links in the description or pinned comment to skip to your class. If you are newer though, the quest will begin with Lord Saladin in the tower. The first part, called Test of Strength, is just going to require Guardians to kill the Iron Banner. Remember, light matters, so just go into what you got and knock out this part of the quest. The next part is called Armed and Dangerous. This progresses with capturing zones. The only, the only requirement is you must be on the zone when it's captured, and the more teammates on the zone, the better. And power plays helps a lot, so go for those. Now is truly the beginning of the actual quest. Light it up will require super melee and grenade kills. Teammates can help progress this quest step, but getting kills yourself progresses it much faster. Choose only 1% for teammates and 2.5-ish percent for your self kills. You want to focus only on the grenade portion of this quest as it will be the longest. The super and melee final blows will come as you try for grenade kills, but also fill up because of your teammates. Now for the grenades. Let's start with Warlocks. I chose Warlock to do the quest on first and found two useful subclasses. First is Nova Warp for its handheld supernova. If you have controverse holes, this helps immensely for always having a grenade up. Don't try to get fancy with Blink and instead stick with Burst so you can pre-hold a grenade while flying around a corner. The other class I switched to only on small maps like Endless Veil vale Retribution is Top Tree Storm Cloud. This has the perk Arc Webbed which allows for potentially high kill counts for one grenade. Arcweb chains lightning between enemies that have been struck by the grenade. This allows you to let your enemy kill each other by them standing too close to one another, which is why it works great on small maps. I recommend that if you run this, right when you spawn in, run to the opponent's first capture zone that they would be capping, and let loose on the a grenade launcher and your grenade at the same time for maximum chains, and hopefully a nice feed of grenade kills in the chat. Crown Tempest works really well with this if you want to run this tree. Hunters have a weird job. Bottom tree arc shadow with arc bolt grenade is where you want to be. The combat meditation perk paired with Frosty's boots will allow insane cooldowns for your grenade. One key part is you will need a way to inflict damage to yourself. I use recluse here with ricochet rounds to shoot myself off a wall, procking the perk, and running around to stack the buffs of Frosty's. What you want to do is always be above your enemy. Keep jumping and peering around corners to shoot a grenade shot, be it mountaintop or any other grenade launcher, and then toss your grenade immediately, just hoping, knowing that you got the kill, continue forward. And then you wanna, after the nade goes off, you wanna injure yourself, and then run to the next fight, and your grenade will be back up. I somehow finished the grenade portion for my titan before the super portion, and here's how. It all relies on the regen of Heart of Innermost Light, the chest piece exotic, and Top Tree Striker, which gives you two grenades. What you want to do is use your grenade launcher to bring the enemy down to like low HP, then toss a grenade. To regen your grenade, simply use another ability, which is Heart of Innermost Light's exotic perk. Pop your barricade or stroller charge an enemy, and notice you get a 10 second empowered buff. This regens the other abilities and makes them stronger. The stronger really doesn't matter, but the regen does. After that, go back to slaying. When you throw your grenade, the other abilities will be ready to use, which creates a nice cycle of abilities. An important note is that the empowerment does not stack, so if you want to maximize the ability regen, wait for the first empowerment to end. For some reason you don't have that exotic I mentioned or you can't use that strat due to a loadout restriction, then comment down below and I can tell you some other good strats for what you have to work with. Now that the pain has ended, you finish the grenades, you can think that you can stop. 
Saladin gives you the next quest titled Nonstop, which is a good movie by the way. For this, Bungie forces you to use some off-meta weapons and then laughs when you fail. But don't worry, teammates help her guess this one too, yet getting them yourself will help more. What your first goal should be is to get the sword kills and camp heavy at all times. Black Talon is the best option as it's a ranged attack. Just use your heavy attack and spam the heck out of it. While you do that, I recommend going for the scout kills and fusion kills, since those are less used. Good scouts include Polaris Lance and... Yeah, scouts. I use Transfiguration from Last Wish just cause, and Nightwatch from Game Prime is pretty good. But if the map is close quarters, I would just switch to an auto rifle and start cranking those out. For these, I recommend Surus Regime, it's by far the best. Both fire options are good, but I hear speeding up is meta. I used the other option because I preferred the slow precision with a non ADSing for fast fire cleanups, but to each their own. I also use Tiger Spite as a legendary option for an auto rifle, but I heard about good things for Gallon's right hand and Nong Hunger. While well, you get these kills with those primaries, mainly focusing on getting your sword kills first, I recommend using Yo In or Aaron Till for your special for the fusion rifle kills. These will go pretty quick, as well as the sniper kills, which might even be done when you finish without even having to touch a sniper because your teammates are going to be getting those kills for you. But if you do, you do need those kills. Supremacy and the scout rifle we call Twilight Oath are insane for double body shots or high aim assist headshots. Else, that part is only as fast as you're able to slay. So team up with some other auto rifle users or scout rifle friends and help each other out with this part since you all can work together. The last part is called Headstrong. This will require wins in the Iron Banner, with win streaks counting for more. For the first Iron Banner, there is a quick exploit, which I hope is still around for you guys. If you have at least a two win streak, you can finish the quest in minutes. What you want to do is go to orbit with a two win streak or more, then click change character. Select the same character and click change character. Select the same character and click change character. You get it. What happens is every time you go to orbit, all your pursuits and win streaks are reevaluated. That counts as a win streak for the quest. After a couple times doing this, it is done, and you go to claim the final set of your Iron Banner gear. If you don't want to cheese it, then just go play and win. That's the end of the Iron Banner quest. The armor rolls with curated perks, and I personally highly recommend them. The class item, the chest piece for PvE, and the helmet for PvP, they're all good. If you have the ornaments, they look even better. Thanks for watching, and go let the wolves run free. What do you have to say to the viewers, Kate Sawyer? Boss. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>